Texas Open Meetings Act, notice is hereby given that the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, in accordance with Article 5, Section 12 of the Charter of said city, will convene an executive session and regular meeting on Tuesday, February 21st, 2006 at 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. in the Commission Chambers on the second floor of the Brownsville City Hall Federal Building located at 1001 East Elizabeth Street, Brownsville, Cameron County, Texas. Mayor, so you're going to read? Executive session items A, discussion pursuant to section 551.071 of the Texas Government Code concerning anticipated litigation. Item B, de deliberation pursuant to section 551.074, Title V of the Texas Government Code concerning the evaluation of the city attorney of the city of Brownsville. Item C, discussion pursuant to section 551.072 of the Texas Government Code regarding real property. Mayor, so moved to go to executive session. Seconded by Commissioner Cisneros, seconded by Commissioner Camarillo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. We'll be in executive session. Good evening, everyone. We have a couple of very special people with us tonight. They're going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance from Egley Elementary. Uh, let me call Nadia Alexis Anzaldúa, third grade. Virginia Barrera, third grade, and Alexis Divine Rodriguez, also a third grader at Eglin. They're going to be lead, leading us in the pledge and in the Texas pledge. Everybody, please stand. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one and indivisible. Good job. You know, some things you just don't rush. Uh, who do we have here for the invocation this evening? Anyone? Reverend Longoria? I'm trying to plug in my computer. I'm sorry. <clears throat> hey, well, please bow our heads. Lord, we give you thanks once again for this wonderful day, this wonderful week. We ask you for special blessings, especially for wonderful weather, as we begin our Charo Day celebrations. Uh, here and in Matamoros. We ask you for everyone in this room as well as everyone in this city for continued blessings, wonderful weather, and just a wonderful and prosperous Charo days, and just well-being for all our city. And we thank you for this, dear Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> Besides being commissioner, teacher, and musician, he, I think he has a calling. <clears throat> all right. We have a uh, long agenda today. Uh, we have several places to get to also, so we're going to try to move through our items as quickly as we can. Uh, item one is Proclamation Arbor Day. Who is here to receive the Arbor Day? Maricela? Why doesn't it surprise me? <laughs> Designating March 2nd, 2006, as the 134th anniversary of Arbor Day. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees and that this holiday be called Arbor Day. It was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. An arbor season is now observed throughout our own Rio Grande Valley. And in the continuation of this celebration year round, the city's beautification committee, which was begun in 1991, surpassed its goal to plant 10,000 trees in Brownsville by the year 2000. And it is now working on its second 10,000 trees. Whereas <clears throat> the updated city of Brownsville landscape ordinance 
went into effect in 1999 to enhance the economic vitality of business areas, increase property values, beautify our community, and has helped the city continue its program to make Brownsville the most heavily forested city in the entire valley. And because of these and other efforts, the city of Brownsville has recognized as a Tree City USA community since the year 2000. And whereas the Brownsville Public Utilities Board has partnered with the city in utilizing its tree spade in a trade a tree program, along with other efforts earning them recognition as a Tree City USA utility. In addition, the healthy communities of Brownsville's environmental trend benders, along with members of Brownsville's garden clubs, schools, civic groups, organizations, and concerned citizens have greatly assisted in promoting <clears throat> the eradication of the invasive arbols plasticos tree species in the community while encouraging environmental stewardship, community beautification, and citywide tree planting. Now, therefore, we, members of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, by virtue of the authority vested by the charter of this said city, we do hereby designate March 2nd, 2006 as Arbor Day in the city of Brownsville, and we urge all citizens to celebrate this, the 134th anniversary celebration of Ar Arbor Day. And we further urge all the Brownsville citizens to plant trees in order to gladden the heart, promote the well-being of this and future generations. This has been done on the 21st of February, 2006, signed by the Mayor, Eddie Trevino, Jr., and the Commissioners. Thank you, Commissioner Arroyo, um, Honorable Mayor and City Commissioners. Um, we are going to hold Arbor Day celebrations this year at Russell School Elementary, 10 o'clock in the morning next Thursday and I'll be providing you additional information um, the following week. This year we'll be, uh, we'll be honoring Melanie Connor and uh, we really hope to see you there. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Mariba. Item two. Item two, consent agenda items A through K. Mayor, so moved to approve. Second. Second. Motion by Commissioner Neto, seconded by Commissioner Longoria. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item three. Item three, consideration and action to appoint or reappoint <clears throat> citizens to the Brownsville Citizens Advisory Committee. Mayor, I'd like to appoint Jerry Frank, Father Jerry Frank. We have a motion by Commissioner Hernandez. Second. Second by Commissioner Camarillo. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Spain. Motion carries. Was that was the only one you were adding, Commissioner Hernandez, to yours? That's all I have right now. Okay. I think there were a few other ones. I'm still lacking one more. You're still lacking one? No. All right. Anybody else? I have mine. Go ahead, Commissioner. Maria Minerva Garcia. Mini, Mini Garcia. I'll second that. All right. Anybody else, Commissioner? That's the only one. That's the only one as missing. Okay, and I'll get you her information right after the meeting. Motion by Commissioner Longoria, seconded by Commissioner Nettles. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. And I have my appointee, um, Sue Alton, right. 31 Winter Haven, Brownsville. For motion by Commissioner Second. Arroyo, seconded by Commissioner Nettles. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Commissioner Mario? I'm going to have to wait next week. Eh? All right. Uh, I will, I think we need to kind of get it done by next week because they're going to start their meetings. On the 23rd first? of March, we have the first, uh, first or meeting. the only uh, BCAC orientation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we still have a little bit of time. Just if you could, uh, as soon as we're done here tonight, uh, let everybody know if they still have an, uh, an appointment to make so that way they make it at the next meeting. Sure, man. Thank you. Uh, w one thing I would like to comment on is that uh, on the two appointees of last time, on uh, February the 7th, one of the appointees uh, is out of the city limits, uh, Sally. Um, and uh, which is that Nelly one? Garcia, uh, Nelly Garcia. Oh, Nelly. my okay. appointee, oh, okay. right? So is that is that the one that you're you replacing today? Hers? Well, that's why I replaced her with Sue. Okay. Right. And I already had appointed mine on the la last week's meeting, right? Correct. Okay. Well, Rose Gomez uh, is inside the city limits, but there's a second criteria, which uh, the appointee has to be inside the CDBG eligible area in in uh, for all the uh, the electoral districts, or the commissioners that represent individual electoral districts. So, in effect, she's not eligible. She's in your district. She's, yeah. district. she's in District 3. That, that is correct. And she's inside the city limits, but not inside not in the, the CDBG, CDBG eligible oh, okay. area. Okay, so she's, then I have to replace her? Yes. Okay, I don't get one by. by 
by any chance, do you have some people ben, that would like to be ben. reappointed that have, were not reappointed? Are there some experienced people there that we haven't? I could get you uh, some names. Why don't you do that just in case we don't come up with somebody, Mayor, that way we can have it all finalized next meeting. Okay. All right. Okay. That's fine. Oh, we have? So she not, right. doesn't qualify her then? Thank you. Because Ben, you told me she did. Excuse me. I, I have a question, Mayor. I'm sorry to, to continue on this, but I was not aware that they also had to meet the secondary criteria. I thought as long as they were within our district in the city limits. For the at-large commissioners and mayor, uh, it could be at-large uh, appointees, but for the uh, uh, district commissioners, uh, they have to be not only inside the city, but inside the city. But it jail. also, even if it's at-large, it still has to so be within the city. So can I switch it with commission? No. Well, that doesn't, that doesn't sound right. Commissioner. It doesn't sound right at Sally, all. Sally, can we switch? If well, no, well, no, no, it's not, it's not about switching. Why, why, why do we have that distinction? I mean, uh, eight, eight members uh, re uh, are to represent grassroots areas, mm -hmm. and uh, the grassroots areas are considered CDBG eligible areas. And right now we don't have eight yet? Is that what you're saying? Uh, we have a total of seven um, that are serving at this time, and then we have two appoint appointees right now, so that would make it ten if they're eligible. Yes. So then does that still have to... Does that still knock yeah, Ms. I, Gomez off? Well, let's, let's come with a clarification. I think you need to look, I think uh, you need you to look, look at it because somehow that doesn't sound that doesn't quite sound right. doesn't sound right to me either. Okay. Just clarification. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank Item you. four. <clears throat> Item four, consideration and action to appoint one new member to the beautification committee. <clears throat> um, Commissioner Longoria, you yes. are... Um, Maribel, and of if it's okay with this commission, I wanted to appoint Mr. Jimmy Paz, and Jimmy works out at the yeah. Sable Palms. I'll, I'll second, second that. that. The price is not on that one already. I, I thought been. he was. Finally got him. <laughs> oh. Motion by Commissioner Longoria, seconded by Commissioner Cisneros. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Maribel. Item five. Item five, consideration and action to appoint one alternate member May to the Board of Adjustment. Was that right? Who was it? I have a nomination if... Um, yeah. Uh, Board of Adjustments, an alternate. Uh, Gabriel Garcia, and he has expressed interest in getting an active on a board. He is a principal right now at a, at a school, high school, <coughs> and he'll be retiring, so he'll be able to... I'll, I'll second that motion. A lot of time we have a motion uh, for Gabri Gabriel Garcia from Commissioner Arroyo, seconded by Commissioner Hernandez. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item 6. Thank you. Item 6, consideration and action to appoint two members to the Transit Advisory Committee. Hey, someone shows interest, you keep them. Good evening. The Transit Advisory Committee is requesting the City Commission to appoint two new members uh, for the Advisory Board to the Advisory Committee to replace Mr. Jerry Briones, who resigned for personal reasons. His term was uh, to expire um, on October the 1st of this, on October 1st, 2006, and Mr. Albert Velez, whose term um, expired yeah. um, at the beginning of last month and uh, is unable to continue to serve. I don't, know, I don't have any recommendations at this time. Um, who, who were those appointments for? Uh, Mr. Alberto Velez was appointed by Commissioner Longoria and uh, Mr. Briones was appointed by Commissioner Bentecourt. Okay. You, you want some time to... to hey, if um, I could have till the next meeting, right, Roma, and, and we'll I'll have one by the next meeting. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We'll need two, though, right? We'll yeah, we we'll need two. Okay. One of them belongs to Commissioner Gordy. The other one we'll, we'll yeah. discuss. All right. Okay. <laughs> Thank All right. you. Thank you, Norma. So we'll table. Uh, Move to table. Second. Motion table by Commissioner Gordy. Seconded by Commissioner Cisneros. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Item 7. Item 7, consideration and action to appoint members to the Downtown Revitaliza Revitalization Advisory Committee. Mayor, we have a note here to go do item 25 and 26 before item 7 and 8. Was that not valid? Oh, yeah. Is there a reason for that? There is. Um, <clears throat> I guess I we've got to establish, Mr. Medina, uh, the, the resolution. Uh, Needs to be done before you appoint. Exactly, okay. because we're amending. Fair enough. All right. Uh, well, we're going to move to uh, item out of order, item 25 and 26. Can we do them both at the same time, Jim, or do we have to take them separate? Uh, no, we can read them both together into the record and then vote separately <coughs> on them. All right. Item 25, 
consideration and action to adopt resolution number 2006-008-A, amend resolution number 2006-008 for the purpose of adding three positions to the Downtown Revitalization Advisory Committee as follows. One representative from the Brownsville Preservations Organization, one representative from the legal profession, and one representative from the real estate profession. Item 26, consideration and action to adopt resolution number 2006-009-A to amend resolution number 2006-009 for the purpose of correcting part one appointments to the Graffiti Advisory Committee. May I move to approve both resolutions 25 and 26 as read? Motion by Commissioner Camarillo to approve, uh, seconded by Commissioner Longoria. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Motion carries. All right, now we can go back to item seven. Yes. Item seven, consideration and action to appoint members to the Downtown Revitalization, Revitalization Advisory Committee. Move to approve. <coughs> Hold on. Uh, to, let's see. I'm here to appoint. All right. I'm sorry, we have a motion to approve by Commissioner Camarillo. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Hernandez. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Thank you for bringing that to my attention, Edward, Commissioner. Edward, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, that's, that's the list that you already have composed? Yes. That's the list composed, yes. Yeah, because um, we talked about have, maybe adding two alternates. Do we do that in the next meeting? What, to this list already? Two alternates and two property owners. I, I, I got to tell you, wishes. I think you already got too many people, but it's... You know, it's a, it's 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 it, it encompasses everybody that probably needs to be there. It's just my concern is when you get so many people, it's exactly. going to make uh, getting anything done a little bit harder, especially from a quorum and well, twenty-four. Mayor, if I if I may add, um, again, we it's open to the community if they would like to attend the meeting, so okay. they can they can feel uh, more than welcome to attend. Okay, we'll do that. Thank you. All right, uh, item eight. Item eight: consideration and action to appoint members to the Graffiti Advisory Committee. Um, I nominated Maria Francisca Chavez as my appointee. I'll second that. And I wanted to nominate. Oh, well, uh, let's let's take it one at yeah. a time. Uh, motion by Commissioner Roy, seconded by Commissioner Cisneros. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. And I want to I want to nominate Dina Garcia. Second. Uh, motion by Commissioner Cisneros, seconded by Commissioner Roy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion carries. All right. Uh, had uh, Luis Carlos Ayala. Second. Motion by Commissioner Longoria, seconded by he's Commissioner Zanos. He's a citizen, not, a, not our employee. <laughs> yeah, he's Aye. got enough to do. Uh, all in favor? Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Don't have anybody yet. You have anybody, Commissioner? Okay. Not yet, Mayor. Uh, Commissioner Hernandez and myself and Commissioner Camarillo will make our appointments at the next meeting. Uh, item nine. Item nine, consideration and action to appoint or reappoint one member to the Brownsville Who's Public up? Library Board. Honorable Mayor, Commissioners, the Brownsville Public Library Board, and with me tonight uh, is the President of the Board, Graciela de Pena, is recommending Irma Cantu to serve on the Library System Board. And so moved. Second. Second. Motion by Commissioner Nanda, seconded by Commissioner Arroyo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All, op Irma. all opposed? May I say a few words? Absolutely, Mr. First of all, I want to thank the Commission uh, for the wonderful cooperation we've had. Uh, I think it's with your support that we've been able to do so many things. I want to also publicly thank Jerry Hedgecock. He's been wonderful to work with. We really are moving, and a lot of it is due to him. I also want to thank Andy Hagen, who is the board member who is being replaced. He was a very valuable member of our group, and we certainly appreciate his service. And uh, thank you for agreeing to have this lady uh, serve on our board. She was very instrumental in leading the way when we started off with the Southmost Library Project. So thank you, and uh, you all enjoy the Chara Day's oh, festivities. Yes. Same to you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gracie. Item uh, 10. Item 10, consideration and action to appoint or reappoint two members to the Brownsville Housing Authority Board. Okay, before I make these uh, two appointments, uh, I want to say and give a word of thanks to Mr. Andy Muniz, who has served on the board of the Brunswick Housing Authority for uh, many, many years. And uh, because of his dedication and his hard work, 
I think he's been able to uh, lead the board and lead the BHA into the new millennium and provide the services that our community so, so desperately needs. I want to thank him uh, because I am going to be making a, uh, another appointment, and I do want to thank him for his service. I don't want that to be taken as anything other than I appreciate his service, but every once in a while I think it's time to, uh, to have a changing of the guard and have some other people. And I'm nominating Mr. Armando Recio, uh, local that. banker, and Mr. Manuel Vasquez uh, as a renomination. I'll second so that motion. It was seconded now. by Commissioner Cisneros. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Again, I want to thank Mr. Muniz very much for his service to Brownsville Housing and to the City of Brownsville. Item 11. Item 11, consideration and action to appoint 13 voting members and six alternates to the Northwest Brownsville Steering Committee. Thank you. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, Honorable Commission. Uh, this item is to appoint 13 members, voting members and six alternates to the Northwest Brownsville Steering Committee in support of the Northwest Brownsville Land Use Study. The Planning Department has actually included a list in the packet of suggestions and availability. However, uh, with your choices, it's not limited to uh, these selections. You're always free to either choose or not choose the selections here. Uh, but with that, we would like to keep it down to 13 voting members and six alternates for the dynamics of the group. It's just easier to manage that way. If you have I any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer I'd them. like to appoint uh, Alice Gonzalez and Judy King from Lakeway. I'll second that. Is Ms. Ms. Gonzalez not on the list, right? No. Right. Okay. We have a motion by Commissioner Hernanda, seconded by uh, Commissioner Cisneros. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. I I'd like to uh, nominate, uh, actually, I'd like to follow all of the rest of the nominations, and uh, my motion would be as such. Second. Uh, I I'm sorry. I'm sorry, no, strike that. Strike that. My motion is going to be for Mr. Jesse Casada, Mr. Joe Galvan, Mr. Roberto Ruiz, uh, Mr. Troy Whitmore, Mr. Pat Birchfield, Mr. Corkill, Ms. McNair, Mr. Dave Thube, Ms. Gustafson, Mr. Merrill, Mr. Ruiz, Mr. Fry, Mr. Cortez, uh, Mr. Garcia, David Garcia, Ms. Uh, Dunlop, and Ms. Del Bosque, and Mr. Tapia. That leaves one opening. That's my motion. For those no, individuals, second that. seconded by Commissioner Cisneros. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. There is one opening from the PNZ Commission. Mm. So Does it have to be a PNZ member? Right, I was going to. It, it doesn't. Okay. I'd like to sit on the committee, uh, Mr. Golden. I think since this is pretty much going to be covered in my area, I think it's uh, essential that I have some. Uh, input on uh, what does happen out there as okay. uh, I've you know been a strong advocate um, for what type of development is going to occur out there so I'd like to be a part of this um, if the Commission approves motion by Commissioner Camario to point himself second by second second Commissioner all in favor aye all opposed motion carries thank you thank aye. you for serving Commissioner. thank you thank you item oh sorry we're going to take an item out of order item 28 so Item 28, consideration and action to accept the housing proposals and tax credit applications of Housing Associates of Brownsville 2, Brownsville Housing Authority, Sunset Haven, and TG 105 Incorporated, doing business as Cunningham Manor Apartments. Honorable Mayor and Honorable Members of the City Commission, uh, with this action that uh, before you, on these housing proposals. The city of Brownsville back in uh, July uh, requested uh, housing proposals uh, from the community. Uh, three of the applicants in your packet submitted proposals. They were reviewed by a committee of housing professionals uh, in, in both uh, Hidalgo and Cameron County. And this proposals also come with leveraging tax credit dollars from the Texas Department of Housing and uh, Community Affairs. So uh, tonight, uh, I recommend that uh, the Housing Associates of Brownsville uh, Number Two, Brownsville Housing Authority, Sunset Haven, which is a, a senior center uh, or senior housing, 
and TG 105 Incorporated uh, under the name of Cunningham Manor Apartments uh, be uh, awarded these housing proposals, which is a combination of home dollars and tax credit uh, applications that they have been awarded by the state. These are loans. Uh, these are not grants. These are loans that will be repaid back over time back to the city of Brownsville. Any questions? Um, I, are there some people, I have some people who signed up for public comment uh, who may want to be speaking on this particular item. That's why we're taking it right now. the armada but i know time is of essence so we're gonna well, everybody seems to be in agreement so right. exactly so we're gonna limit it to two of our residents that want to thank you all for this opportunity is the line good evening mayor and commissioners i am santa del angel a resident of point sierra development and i am also the president of the resident advisory board as president of the residents advisory board it is my responsibility to be an advocate for all residents of the Brownsville Housing Authority. I am here tonight to speak in support of the Brownsville Housing Authority and its efforts to increase the availability of housing for Brownsville senior citizens. Uh, this is especially important for those of us that are disabled and on fixed incomes. We are here to request that you approve the Brownsville Housing Authority's application to fund a portion of the development costs for the new senior housing project at Sunset Terrace. The property includes a number of amenities for the residents to enjoy. These amenities include a community center, a beauty salon, exercise and recreation room, fountain and community garden, a walking trail and dog run, library and theater, and an activity room. These quality amenities are usually only available in higher income senior housing or assisted living developments. Our low-income senior citizens deserve the same opportunity and need your help to make this housing a reality. The units are designed to meet our needs with six different floor plans. They are energy efficient and include all of the modern conveniences. Over 15% more than double the fair housing requirement will be fully accessible for disabled residents. This new development will be one of the best senior housing communities in the Rio Grande Valley. The Brownsville Housing Authority has designated 30 of the units to be public housing units. HUD will provide an operating subsidy for these units and as a result the residents will be required to only pay rent in an amount equal to 30 percent of the monthly income with the balance pay paid by HUD. Senior citizens at very low incomes at or below the poverty le level will be able to live out the remainder of their lives in quality housing. All of our lives, we have been productive citizens of this wonderful city. With the support of the Brownsville Housing Authority, its development team, and the city of Brownsville, we can make this development a reality. This housing community will provide the social, physical, and economic assistance needed in our community. Our senior citizens deserve nothing less. Thank you for listening to my presentation and respectfully request your re approval of the Brownsville Housing Authority's housing assistance application. My fellow senior citizens need your support and a confirmation that we are not forgotten. Thank you for your time and have a good evening. Thank you for being here and yeah. giving, sharing those words with us, Ms. Delhan. We have another lengthy letter, but what I will do, I will submit them to you, but Ms. Gutierrez, our resident commissioner, would like to thank you. I just, uh, good evening, Mayor. Nice to see you again, Ms. And Gutierrez. And commissioners, we thank you very much for, um, for giving us the opportunity to be here and, uh, to um, help us on this, uh, on this, uh, how do you call this? Uh, this application. This for, application for the for the elderly, for the elderly at um, Sunset Haven. Thank you so much. Thank, for you. Your Thank you. Thank you for being with Coming. us. We also have the president of the Via del Sol Resident Council, Ms. Uh, Ludivina Garza, and also with us is our current chairman, Mr. Muniz, and. Like you, Mayor, I also want to thank him publicly for the uh, numerous uh, years that he has served. I think you've been there, what, eight, uh, eight years, Sandy? Seven. Well, so it was I think he deserves a big round of applause. And I, think 
I know that I wouldn't have been able to do, or, or the administration, because we have the, one of the best housing authorities in the state. And, that, and that's documented. That's documented, yes, sir, 100%. <laughs> that's not And that's it's not, a that's tribute to all of the hard work of the staff and our board. And again, thank you. And I'm, I'm thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable Mayor and Commissioners, my name is Ron Anderson. I'm the Executive Director for Housing and Community Services. We're a nonprofit housing organization, and we have an affiliate here in Brownsville, Cunningham Manor. And we have applied to the city for $365,000 to assist us with our tax credit application. I want you to know that that $365,000 that you're giving to us is going to leverage over $8 million in housing money to come into Brownsville. So it's a good return. We, uh, in, or in addition to housing, we do, uh, we have Housing Plus. Uh, two year, three years ago, we built a community center at our property with a donation from the Meadows Foundation and the Houston Endowment, and we provide uh, resident uh, services and so on there. I would like to just acknowledge the fact that uh, uh, residents from our property are here. Uh, we do operate with a five-member board, three folks from the community, two folks of residents on the property, so that we have resident input on all of the housing work that we're doing here. So thank you for your support. Uh, do you have anything to say, ladies, very quickly? Yeah? OK. <laughs> Buenas it's, important, tardes. it's important for them to be here because Absolutely. it really is a sign that they are stepping up to take the part of their responsibility. Absolutely. Muy buenas noches, señor. Este, yo, nosotros veníamos para, nombre? Para, para el, nombre? la ayuda. Soy Rita Escarcega. Uh, de los apartamentos Kenneham, veníamos por la ayuda para que se vean mejor los apartamentos, como Brosville está claro. viéndose mejor, está creciendo y, y nosotros necesitamos muchas cosas ahí en los apartamentos y a ver si nos pudieran ayudar. Bueno, Muy bien, señora. Gracias por Gracias. estar aquí hoy con nosotros esta noche. El Señor los bendiga, ¿verdad? Buenas, buenas tardes. Muy buenas tardes. Este, también, como dice ella, ¿verdad? Estamos, soy Cipriana Torres, ¿verdad? Este, Necesitamos ese dinero para esos apartamentos porque ya estamos viejos, ¿verdad? Creo que necesitamos una, otra cosa mejor, ¿verdad? El Señor los bendiga. Pero necesitamos Gracias. mucha ayuda, por favor. Gracias, señora Torres. Muy buenas tardes, señores comisionados. Um, mi nombre es Lilia García. Estoy aquí por la razón de que necesitamos mejorías. Estamos viviendo en los apartamentos, en los Cunningham Apartments y queremos mejorías para, el, para nuestro beneficio, ¿verdad? Y beneficio de la comunidad. Así es. Gracias este, por estar aquí. Y, y necesitamos eh, el apoyo de ustedes, ¿verdad? Para que ustedes eh, nos den el dinero que necesitamos para el apoyo de, de nuestra comunidad. Uh, muchísimas gracias y paso muy buenas tardes. Gracias, señor García. Gracias. Gracias. My name is Julie Leal. I'm the property manager, Cunningham Manor Apartments. And I would just like, you know, if we could uh, approve this. Uh, we do have a community Actually, center. Actually, Julie, they already approved it. We're just telling them <laughs> thank you. Oh, okay. You. Thank you very much then. Thank you very much for that. And I know that Cunningham Manor is going to look wonderful. We haven't, but we are going to approve it. Okay. Thank you very well, much. With that said, I'd like I to make a motion to approve. Stop. <laughs> thank you. I'd like to make the motion to approve. Okay, thank you. Second. I assume you're, 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 uh, you're recommending approval, Mr. Medina. I want to make sure that's on the record. <laughs> All right. Just one last note. Uh, we are in partnership with the Housing Authority. As of today, I think we have 64 uh, families from the Housing Authority with Housing Authority vouchers that are residents at, at Cunningham Manor. So we work very closely with them, and I thank them for their support of our work. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Thank we you. have a motion to approve by Commissioner Cisneros, seconded seconded by Commissioner Camarillo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Mm -hmm. I, and I want to thank the citizens, uh, the home, the apartment owners, and for being here tonight. Sometimes coming to these city commission meetings can be extremely daunting, uh, but I appreciate them being here, and I'm glad that they were here to speak on their behalf. So I, I commend them on that. Thank you. Next item. Oh, actually, going back to item, item 12. 12. Item 12, public hearing and action on first reading on ordinance number 2006 1452 establishing uniform guidelines and specifications for outdoor and on-site signage within the corporate city limits and extraterritorial jurisdiction of the city of Brownsville. Honorable Mayor and Honorable Commission, this table was uh, was tabled on February the 7th, 
and before that we had a, uh, a workshop on this item. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer, or uh, it is a public hearing. All right, this is a public hearing. So move to close public hearing. Second. Second. Motion to close Second. public hearing. Uh, oh, okay. Step forward, sir. Sorry about it. Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the commission. My name is Chris Stokes. I work for Lamar Outdoor Advertising. Sir, what was your name again? Chris Stokes. Um, I also represent the Outdoor Advertising Association of Texas. Uh, we have we have not attended any uh, or have been invited to any of the meetings that are set up to discuss this ordinance. Uh, we've read it. Uh, we don't think it's going to work for us at all. We don't think it's going to work for the city. And I'm kind of going to want to outline a little bit of our objections to the ordinance if I can. Um, we, in the past, we have presented ordinances to the city. In fact, I have one tonight to pass out. Uh, we've actually hired a local attorney, uh, Bill Pope, to work with us. Work with us. We uh, try to get things. Can you excuse me just one second? Sure. Uh, council, if we are in about to go into litigation or we are about to be sued, should this be being discussed at a city commission meeting? Uh, we are currently in litigation. I'm assuming that uh, he's here to discuss matters outside of that. Absolutely. Okay. It's nothing to do with litigation. Absolutely nothing to do with it. Uh, Is that the same lawyer who's representing you in the litigation? No, no, we no. You have separate counsel for that. No, no. Mr. Pope was local. We hired him just to write the signed ordinance. I just bring I, it up. I, no, my question was: Is he representing you, or one of the attorneys representing no. you in the litigation? No. Okay. No. Thank you. Um, I bring it up only to point out that we've we've gone to extensive. Ex we've spent a lot of money to try to work with the city. We weren't able to get the ordinance that we drafted before the, the Planning and Zoning Commission. We weren't told why. We just couldn't get it on the on the agenda and it kind of let it drop. We came back back in June of this last year in 2005 with another ordinance draft. Again, the same response. Favorable hearing from the planning director. He worked with us, listened to us, talk, had lunch with us, but couldn't get, a, get it on the agenda of the Planning and Zoning Commission. So we tried to work with the city and uh, you know, to come up with a reasonable draft. Now, why should we work with you? Well, we're the largest outdoor advertising company in Texas. We've been in the Valley for 25 years. We're all over the state. We know a little bit about sign ordinances and about off-premise sign ordinances specifically, so we thought we could bring something to the table. We've worked with Harlingen, you know, the other cities in the Valley, uh, including, you know, uh, who else? Well, I got all listed here. McAllen, I've been there. I've been to Mission, I've been to Westlaco. Um, so we, you know, so we have a proposal tonight. We think this ordinance before you should be tabled and further discussed. We, our local businesses that usually util, utilize this, and for example, play, uh, businesses like um, Sanborn's Insurance, Allstate, insurance agents for Allstate and State Farm, uh, County Casuals, local automotive businesses like Candius Motors, uh, Luke Freya Motors, National Automotive Part retailers like Advanced Auto Parts, local restaurants, like Palinque, uh, Palinque's, uh, Taco Palinque, uh, Gladys Porter Zoo, the University of Texas in Brownsville, the Valley Regional Hospital. These are clients of ours that utilize our advertising. Why do they do it? Because we are very effective and we're inexpensive. Without us, they were forced to use radio and television. They can't target their audiences, and that's two to three times more expensive than who we are. This ordinance before, before you will put us out of business. That's, I think, the intent of this ordinance, whether you realize that or not. Whoever drafted it I, I, is not a friend of our industry, didn't ask for our input, and is just kind of putting this in front of you all, and, and we think it's a serious mistake. A couple of things to specifically point out about this ordinance I think should be brought to your attention. Um, one, of the, one of the things that really okay. caught us initially was the requirements for the landscaping. landscaping idea of landscaping around a sign is, is done in other cities in the valley, uh, but this idea of two feet of landscaping for every one foot of sign would require somebody to buy it as a hotel, maybe a 300 foot sign on the expressway, which is pretty standard, to have 600 foot of landscaping around the base of their sign. Now, we can imagine how much parking and how much real estate that would require for them to do that. Now, if I'm going to build a hotel, on the expressway, do I want to build it in Brownsville where I have to spend that kind of money for landscaping, or do I want to go down to San Benito or to Harlingen and, and do it down there where it's, I don't have to do that. I don't have that requirement. I think that is one of the things you have to consider about this ordinance. Some of these issues um, will, I think, you know, hurt the competitive nature of, of Brownsville as far as bringing business into the community. 
These aren't necessarily specific issues about outdoor advertising. Like I say, we have an ordinance that we can address these. These are just some of the ideas that, that you need to think about. Um, this ordinance restricts on-premise signage. We all know that, you just think it's kind of common sense how important on-premise signage is to local retailers. There's nobody here to represent, you know, there any objections. I don't assume, I assume that's because they don't know about it. Normally when a city addresses an on-premise issue, you've got the auto dealers and the restaurants, the hotel motel, and the real estate people all want to say in, on how that's addressed. It's important to them. There's nobody here tonight to address these issues. So uh, we've looked at the on, at the on premise. We're not on premise experts. We know enough about it to say that maybe you need to slow down and take another look at it before you pass this on first reading, because I think some more local business people in the community deserve a look at it. Um, another thing we we were talking about. There's an there's an incentive in this ordinance that to try to take down non-conforming signs. It's, it's a laudable deal. We all see non-conforming buildings in the city that we'd like to see removed. We understand the legal ramifications. This, this has a provision that tells a landowner if he goes to the city with a building permit to improve his business, to increase the size of his business more than 25%, he's got to remove all the non-conforming signs and other things on his property without any compensation or anything. So he's got to make a decision. Do I want to expand my business and lose my non-conforming rights? or do I want to move out of the city? And I think, because he could go down to Harlingen and not have to do this kind of stuff. He'd go down to San Benito and go to McAllen. Let me stop you, because you, you brought that up now. I was, I was going to see if you are going to bring it up again, and you have now three or four times. You mentioned Harlingen and McAllen, that you helped draft the ordinances. Yes. Did they pass what you recommended over there? They have a, we are recommending tonight a... No, 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 no. My question was, in Harlingen and yes. McAllen, did yes. they recommend, did they approve what you, what you supplied? They took what we supplied and they, they molded it with the planning director. We're not saying take ours, you know, we'd like you to, you know, we, we present something that could be passed by y'all. But what our experience is, is y'all want to put your own input into it. We want to bring other members of the community in. They, they listen to us and yes, parts when of that ordinance. When were those ordinances approved by McAllen and Harlingen? 2002, 2003, in that area. Do you have those with you? I have planned, we've supplied those ordinances around. I didn't bring them. I didn't. Now, you mentioned that you had met with, uh, did, you, did you say planning director? Is that Mr. Medina? Yes, I did. Okay. Mr. Medina remembers. We had a lot. <coughs> so, I, I think you said you brought it, you mentioned it a year ago or? or Maybe in June. Okay. In June was correct. So, are, are you telling us now that you haven't been monitoring this issue to see when the city commission was going to discuss this? Well, we were aware, we came up last, on the last meeting, uh, that was, we were, we, you know, these things, we, we, we heard about it after it came up, so we weren't able to attend the last meeting. But no, I haven't heard of anything per, you know, else that's happened in the city. Have you ever met with the people from the Browns of Beautification Committee? Yes. In the, in the past, we actually did a, a couple of years ago, we did a PowerPoint presentation to the members of the committee. Okay. Well, let me just say without, you know, uh, we don't want to have any fireworks here tonight. And, and I don't want to belabor the point. We're not, this commission is not going to do anything that's going to hurt business. And when you say if you do this, peop, co companies are going to stop expanding or stop, stop moving to Brownsville, I really take issue with that, okay? But, but it's enough of a, of a, of a concern. Well, I think you're wrong, first of all, okay? But I'm not going to sit here and tell you that everything in here may or may not be conducive to economic development or business. So uh, I'm going to take everything you say with a grain of salt, but uh, I also uh, don't want this commission to make any type of a, uh, take any action that may be detrimental in the, in the, in the bigger picture of things, okay? That's all so, we're asking. Take, take, a, take a step back and look at this again before you pass it. And Mayor, I'd like to address the commission before you make a final decision I, with respect to that. You had a couple other uh, items in the ordinance that you were going to well, we were just going to point out some of the inconsistencies in the ordinance. I, I don't want to belabor the point. I don't know if you want to hear it. But if you all are going to look at it some more, but I won't go into it. I'll be happy to present it to the planning director. He's seen a lot of this before. We have talked about this ordinance in the all past. Right. Let, 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 let me hear from Mr. Goza then. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, members of the commission, uh, Commissioner um, Longoria alluded to the fact that we're currently in litigation with Lamar uh, over previous uh, sign agreements that the city has had with them, so I won't uh, further allude to that or go into it any further, but uh, suffice to say that, that that litigation is currently ongoing. Uh, this ordinance was initiated well over a year ago and was presented to the Planning and Zoning Commission over a year ago. Um, it's been uh, revised in accordance with their recommendations twice and has been uh, now before the City Commission uh, 
for this is the second time for the first reading. Uh, at, at all points along the way, efforts were made to coordinate between the Spotista signs and Lamar signs because those are the two leading representatives of outdoor signage. Uh, a number of uh, business owners were consulted and in fact, um, I'm happy to say that the Chamber of Commerce uh, has just uh, provided us a resolution, uh, if, as I understand, unanimously approving the, uh, the sign ordinance with the exception of one business, which was Lamar Signs. Uh, Ms. Maribel Baca is here, and uh, she, had, she had brought the resolution to me. But to imply that local business owners were it's not moves. to imply that local business owners were not in favor of this ordinance is, is incorrect. Um, I think that, um, that everyone has had sufficient time at this point to review the ordinance and make changes and, and, uh, and uh, make corrections. And I would urge the commission to take this opportunity to, to take some type of uh, decisive action regarding regarding the ordinance. Uh, what, what about this point of, of 600 feet for ex that example? That, that does sound a bit extreme. Well, there are uh, encroachment uh, limitations. It could not encroach too close to a highway. That would supersede any requirement for landscaping if it's along the freeway, for example. Um, ex not existing non-conforming signs would remain the way they are. Uh, but no, no one's requiring them to go back and landscape signs that are already there. Mayor Bill, was the gentleman correct in his comment where he said that we're requiring two feet of landscaping for every foot? That's what he's talking about. On the yes, sir. That's the way. That's the language in the ordinance. That makes it expressly you wouldn't have to. That that I mean that does sound a bit Same much. Advertising. That's billboards off-premise signs. Oh, that's commercial. Much. Oh, not for the business. No. I want to no. open up a hotel. Oh no 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 okay. no. no, no. Okay. okay. Um, you made it sound like every no yeah. mayor r right now uh, on-premise signs for businesses is confusing and archaic right it's tied into the building permit unfortunately we haven't had a really clear instructions to business owners opening up this mm -hmm. ordinance lays down the foundation for clear uh, and precise information as to how the signage is to be located and where and what size for each particular business so it's it i think the business owners will, will welcome it because they know when they go to the building official you know they already know what kind of sign they're going to have and what size david bell is chairman of your planning and building commission i know this has never been before his commission he would have informed us and invited us to come out there and ask for input the past so uh, this has never been before his planning and zoning commission i'm aware of we're aware i don't think this has to go this before has. the planning and zoning and, and Mayor, it, it has... Well, you, you know, you keep saying that there hasn't been input, and, and I have to take offense to that because that is not correct. Maybe the input that you've given hasn't been well received or hasn't been agreed to. You know, I can, I can agree with you on that, but uh, it's, it, it's safe to say that you have an in, a, a, a self-serving interest in this particular ordinance because of the business that you're in. Now... Uh, this seems to have this ordinance seems to have garnered enough support from the community both from the beautification aspect and from the business aspect so that all of those concerns are being addressed i guarantee you right now that if there's something wrong with this we will change and it becomes an operational issue or a detriment to economic development or expansion in this city we will immediately address that which we can do am i correct, correct. Of course. all right so, I would so move to close public hearing, Mayor. Second. Mayor I'd, like, I'd like to make one comment. Go ahead, I, I think uh, having studied this for a long time and, and seeing that some of the local businesses have taken advantage of some of the on-premise signs, I think it's really important we do this because they have these huge yeah. billboard-type signs now. At least two banks, a car dealership, maybe three banks have them, and they're actually private, giant billboards. And at some point, that will also interfere with that 600 foot, that, that spacing between them, because they're actually the same type of sign that the Lamar has, yet privately owned. The other issue is, I don't think it takes away anything from what Lamar has now. It just basically restricts the future by us putting strong ordinances in place. That's the real issue. That's correct. It's not hurting business. It's hurting, it's hurting the sign companies. Well, they're not. They're not hurting them, but it's not. It's, it's restricting what they can do and what they can't do in our community. Well, they That's can do cool. it I within these to, guidelines. Within these guidelines, I think it's very important that we have uh, this in place. And I'll second so, your motion to close public hearing. 
Got a motion to close public hearing by Commissioner Nettles, seconded by Commissioner Hernandez. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion, motion carries. This is an action item. I'd like to move to approve. Motion Second. to approve by Commissioner Arroyo, seconded by Commissioner Hernandez. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item 13. Item 13, public hearing and action on ordinance number 2006-1453, authorizing the issuance, sale, and delivery of approximately $9,410,000 an aggregate principal amount of City of Brownsville, Texas, general obligation, public imp improvement refunding bonds, series 2006, securing the payment thereof by authorizing the levy of an annual ad valorem tax, approving and authorizing the execution of all instruments and procedures related thereto, including a paying agent, registrar agreement, a bond purchasing agreement, an escrow agreement, and an official statement. Smile beat. Uh, Mayor, uh, if I may, I know that issue is going to arise that the actual numbers of, of, of issuance are slightly different than those that were noticed. And uh, both Bond Council and I concur that it was noticed with <coughs> substantial correctness to advise the public of the issue that's being presented and that it's, it's, not, uh, it's not a problem that the actual dollar amounts uh, vary s slightly from the amounts that were actually noticed in the public agenda. Our own mayor, member of the city commission, I would also like, since these two items, 13 and 14, are, re are related, I would like for uh, the city secretary to also consider 15, no? thir 13 and 14. On 13, the amount of 9,410,000. Uh, let's, let let's let her read it. Okay. He Item 14, public hearing and action on ordinance number 2006-1454 authorizing the issuance, sale, and delivery of approximately $10,490,000 in aggregate principal amount of City of Brownsville, Texas, combination tax and revenue certificates of obligation, series 2006, securing the payment thereof by authorizing the levy of an annual ad valorem tax, approving and authorizing the execution of all instruments and procedures related thereto, including a paying agent, registrar agreement, a bonding purchasing agreement, and an official statement. I don't know, members of the City Commission, we would like to make two changes to 13. Uh, the number should be changed from 9,410,000 to 9,375,000. And on item number 14, from 10,490,000 to 10,545,000. Item 15. Last Monday, uh, Noe Hinojosa, oh, by the way, uh, Mr. Noe Hinojosa could not be here tonight. We do have a representative from uh, Estrella Hinojosa, this uh, Sotelo, Mr. Sotelo is here. And w of course, we also have Tom Spurgeon that we'll, that we'll t discuss. Do you have any questions regarding the ordinances? Uh, last Monday, we had a, uh, a conference call meeting with uh, the rating agencies regarding this particular bond and CO issue. Uh, they were, if I may say, they were very impressed with the, uh, the way the city is handling their, their finances. They were very, very um, pleased that the uh, city is showing good economic indicators, such as unemployment rates have decreased, sales tax have increased, uh, property tax rolls have increased, and the city's general fund, fund balance, is very strong, and we continue with this um, pace that we've had in the past. I, I'd also received word from Standard, from Estrella Hosa, uh, Standard and Poor's talked to them, and they said that their committee, the Standard and Poor's committee, were so impressed with Brownsville that they're gonna be looking at us very closely next year for a possible rate, uh, rather a rating, rating increase. Again. Again. Yes, so uh, we did real well. Going back to the, uh, by the way, the, the, uh, we have kept the same ratings. Uh, Stetter and Poor's is A, Fitch is A+, plus, and Moody's A2. Uh, under, under this package, if you, you have time, you can go ahead and just read some of the comments that each of the rating agencies gave. And, and I'll, I'll touch on, on Stetter and Poor's, for, for instance, and this is on the second page of their letter. Uh, on the middle of the page, it says, Brownsville's financial conditions remain sound. Fiscal year 2004 marked the city's 
second consecutive year of operating surpluses, which has contributed to the restoration of, his, of its historically strong general fund balances after declines in fiscal year 2002 and 2001. The unreserved general fund balance was 11.8 million, or a strong 21.6% of expenditures at fiscal year end 2004. Unaudited figures for fiscal year 2005 reflect a $914,934 surplus and a year-end general fund balance of $13.6 million or a strong 21% of their expenditures. And again, they mention the word strong. Uh, the fiscal year 2006 adopted budget included a $2.2 million reduction in fund balance. However, city officials have historically budgeted very conservatively and expect balance operations by year end. The city's strong performance is due mainly to the continued growth of sales and property tax revenues coupled with improved expenditures controls. And if you looked at the other comments from the other rating agencies such as Moody's and Fitch, they go along with more, more or less what uh, Stetter and Poor said. Going back to the uh, to the, uh, what type of rates the city will be receiving um, on this bond and CO issue. As far as the, uh, the GO and improvement uh, bonds, the rates, it's around 4.28% and 4.37. So the average is around 4.33%. If you recall, uh, a month ago, we were looking at rates at around 5.10, 5.15%. So this is a big improvement. Uh, also, under, under tab number four, if um, you look at the, uh, at the rate, rate impact schedule that was, pre that was prepared by Estrada Hinojosa, if you look at the, uh, the, the debt service rate has changed considerably. If you recall, the first presentation that was done by Strayna Hosa way back in December, we were looking at a possible four cent increase in our debt service rate. Well, that rate has, is now zero increase. Uh, they have done some, some uh, work regarding some of the, uh, some of the, uh, this series, like restructuring some of, some of the uh, payments to future years. As a result, there, there has been uh, a savings. Uh, we recommend that uh, you approve uh, board, uh, both ordinances tonight since these are bonds, it only requires uh, one reading. Again, this is a public hearing, so. You want to let anybody else say anything? <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is a public hearing. Motion to close. Second. Motion to close public hearing by Commissioner Nanda. <coughs> Seconded by Commissioner Arroyo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Action. And, Mayor, if I'm not mistaken, we only read into the agenda item. 13 and 14. Uh, only all, item 13 was the only one that we read into the agenda. No, she read, she read 14. 14. Oh, you did? Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. I make a motion to approve on first reading. With, item 13, 14. with, with the changes. With the changes. changes. Yeah. yeah. Motion to approve by Commissioner Second. Hernandez with the changes. Uh, seconded by, I'm Second. sorry, Commissioner Camarillo. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Pete. Well done. 15. Pete's no? Item 15. Item 15. Public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 2006-856-KK, amending the code of ordinances of the city of Brownsville by amending ordinance number 956, chapter 15, garbage and trash, of the code of ordinances of the city of Brownsville, section 15-8, specifying charges for sanitation services by amending subsection C1 and 4A, providing for an effective date, providing for severability, and ordaining other provisions related to the subject matter thereof. Thank you. <coughs> Honorable Mayor, members of the City Commission, this is a uh, item that, that is brought to you once a year. Uh, the contract that we have with uh, BFI allows us to increase the rates based on the consumer price index. The, uh, the uh, current rates, for instance, right now that the uh, city has on the solid waste and landscape uh, brush bulk collection rates, which is all residential accounts, 
the current rate right now for curbside services is 1684. Uh, that also is charged to the Brownsville Housing Authority. For those um, customers that have two containers, the rate is 2076. And then the back door or the walk-in is 2363. These are the monthly rates. We are proposing at the bottom of that schedule says new, by the way, the new rates will go into effect if you approve this ordinance uh, on April 1st of this year. Uh, BFI rate is going up. Uh, by the way, we, we do have a rate where we, we distribute some of the revenue among the BFI and the city. Uh, for curbside service, uh, we are uh, recommending that uh, BFI's rate move from 12.38 to $13, and the city's rate from 4.46. We're recommending or BFI is asking? We, okay. BFI's rate is set at 5%. This ordinance also includes a portion that the city rate retains from the service of, 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 of this, this service. We keep a, a certain percentage. So we are recommending for us, for the city, the, the, uh, the BFI rate is already set because of the contract that we have. It, it, we, we, have, we have verified and it's, it's, it's within what the contract calls for, which is the, the, the 5%. However, uh, we, the city, I guess the city general fund would also like to add a small percentage to that rate. But the bottom line, the increase is 4.22% for the curbside service uh, 8.86 percent for two containers and the walk-in uh, 474. If you look at at BFI, the BFI rate increase is 5 percent across 5.01, 4.97, 5 percent rounded off. Uh, let's look at the other schedule. Why are we recommending this? Next slide. This is the way it's, it's uh, we, we want the rates to look like so that they can be about even as to the way the distribution is with BFI. Mm -hmm. For instance, the, uh, the BFI rate right now, and, and again, I'm looking at, because there's a, dist there's a distribution between, the, the total rate is 17.55, well, that's what we recommend it, but $13 is kept by BFI. We, the city, would keep 455 of that 17.55. Or in other words, that the percentage breakdown between the 1755, the city would retain 25, 93 percent, and BFI percentage is 7407. For the two containers, the city keeps 26.19 percent of the 2260, and BFI retains 7381. For the back door and walk-in, a BFI percentage retainage is 24 percent. We keep. <coughs> 2598, which is pretty even across the board for those three services, which is the curbside, the two containers, and the walk-in or door. Mm. By allowing us to have this small increase, we will generate around $30,000 annually for us. Let's look at the other slide, please. What ha has this contract done to the for the city? Last year, for instance, we collected from BFI Franchise fees, money going into the general fund, 306909 We also collected from BFI, because they do use our landfill, 2247128 We, the city of Brownsville, received 2554038 as a result of this BFI contract. Next slide, please. This is what we retain. When I mentioned to you the percentages that the, city of, that the city keeps from the residential accounts, last year we kept for us 1622854 in the general fund and the landfill fund 387818 So the city from this contract generated 2010672 for us from that 25% that we get. That's how much we get. That's without the increase. That is without the increase last year. Mayor, so this increase is only $30,000. 
for us for the city. Own, it's between I'm, 25 and 30. I'm not in favor of it, Mayor. Be, I let, I let I the think, four go. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's. I don't I, think I, it's, I don't believe the CPI and the new contract when we renegotiate. I think we need to renegotiate that. And if we're forced to do this by contract to the to the people that have to pay the bills, that's one thing. But to add to it this time. I just can't see I, I don't it. agree with it either, Pete. I'm, okay, we raise a little here, a little okay, there. Okay. It keeps hurting Pete, the taxpayers. Explain something to me. Or, not in favor. At of least it. from my understanding. BFI gets their 5% as per contract, correct? Yes. Now, what we want to, what you're asking us to add on there is so that we can have a our little, little portion of it. A little extra. Let's find it somewhere else, man. Yeah, I understand, Pete, what, what we're trying to do. I just, I'm not in favor of it, you know, especially with gas barely going down. The citizens are barely feeling the relief. I know it's not a lot. But it's still going to affect some people, so I personally, I'm not, I'm not in favor somewhere of it. else, Pete. Not, not. I don't want. I don't want to increase any more on the people's. You're still going to increase their, their well, residential. But we don't. Our hands are tied on that issue. We're not. We're not. A in, a, in a way, what, what, you, if, what you're saying, from what I hear from you, is go ahead and table this. No. 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 Wait a minute. By contract, we don't have to do anything. Okay. Right, uh, Mr. That's my I would need to review it, but my understanding is that currently we're not required to increase it. The five percent is not due yet. I don't no, know. No, no, no. No, we're not required. What we're saying is that we're not. We're not. We don't have to act on the, the reason, five percent. The reason why we're coming before you, so that you could approve this ordinance, is because we were adding a small percentage to the city's portion. By from what I understand, by contract, it's already built in that they get their percentage. On based on the CPI and fuel costs. Then I'll make a motion to table. Can you second? make a motion to say no it's to a the public hearing? Well, no, no, because I don't want that to create an issue on the on the it's contract. It's a public hearing, so first of all, let's close the public hearing. Okay, so move to close public hearing. Second. Uh, motion to close uh, public hearing by Commissioner Donato, seconded by Commissioner Nettles. All in Aye. favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries action. Motion to table. Motion second. Table by Commissioner Nanda, seconded by Commissioner Mrs. Nettles. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion. I want to make sure I understand this. Table meaning we don't bring it back. Right. Well, actually. Unless, unless we have to, per the contract, approve Mayor, that Mayor, BFI. But Mayor, we, the, the commission does not need to approve the, right, so the CFI. So we never have to bring it back. Okay. So I don't think just we have leave to table. We just, just have leave to say it. no Let to it die. action. Actually, the uh, five percent has already been approved previously by the by the commission when they initially approved the contract. So that'll take place automatically, based uh, on contractual obligations. Yes, correct. That's correct. correct. Um, we are, however, re required uh, when we table an item to to bring it back for further action. So what we would do is just simply bring back the action item uh, for the small increase that Pete is describing. At that time, the commission will be able to vote presumably against it, but. Well, well, why don't we just take care of that right Send now? Send the vote. Oh, right now. Yeah. I'll, I'll, okay, I'll, the motion has to I'll be made by table. Commissioner Denon. I'll the table, and I'll, I'll move to uh, deny. deny. I'll second that. The rate increase. The city portion. The city's portion. The city's portion. Oh, I second right. that. We, Jim? That's correct. And right. that, the other first, increase first. will uh, occur just as a matter of the contract. Correct. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Denon to rescind his earlier motion and to deny uh, item 15. Second. Uh, seconded by... Commissioner Cisneros, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. All right. Item 16. Item 16, public hearing and action on first reading on ordinance number 2006-1455 to abandon a portion of an unused 60-foot road right-of-way known as Flor de Mayo. Uh, Honorable Mayor, Commissioners, this is a, a piece of right-of-way that's never been dedicated. It's never been used. Uh, it's just that it's no good to us. and. We recommend approval. Right. Is it right in public hearing? It's going to be three elementary. This property sits on the, uh, in, it's a f actually the front portion of the Eturia school. Uh, so will BISD taking this over? Yes. Yes. So move will to the public hearing. No. We have a motion public to approve by Commissioner. I'm sorry. We have a motion to close public hearing by Commissioner Second. Nettles, seconded by Commissioner Camarillo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Action. Motion to approve. Second. Motion approved by Commissioner Nettles, seconded by Commissioner Camarillo. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item 17. Item 17, public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 235-933-KK, amending the civil service classification plan as stated on ordinance 933-JJ. Honorable Mayor, uh, Commissioners, over the last several years, if you notice, the city of Brownsville has had a uh, great economic growth. Because of that growth, our uh, fire prevention uh, division 
has been lacking in doing annual inspections. I'm here before you to increase our uh, fire lieutenant's position by at least one. My current budget can take that uh, hit without any budget amendments. All right. This is a public hearing. So move to close. Second. Motion to close by Commissioner Zanetto, seconded by Commissioner Camarillo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Action. Motion to approve. Motion Second. to approve by Commissioner Zanetto, Thank seconded you, by Commissioner Longoria. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Chief. Item 18. Item 18, public hearing and action on first reading of protested ordinance number 235-2005-073-S to allow an apartment specific use in a dwelling use district for lot 13 of Lakefront Boulevard of Brownsville Land and an improvement company subdivision near Lakeside Lane and West Jefferson Street. Honorable Mayor and City Commissioners, uh, this is the area stated in red. This is Lakeside Boulevard. Uh, the Valley Regional uh, Hospital is here, and then uh, Skinner Elementary and other uh, businesses are here in Central Boulevard. Brownsville Medical Center. Right. Brownsville. On, yes. on the Valley, Valley, Valley Baptist. Valley Baptist. Valley Baptist. Valley Baptist. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, as you can see here, uh, the there one. are some apartments uh, uses in the area, which, which is in here along Lakeside. But the area here on this side of the street is basically single family residential. In this particular case, the applicant uh, did amend his application to reduce the number of units. It was approved by Plan Zoning Commission, but it is protested by the surrounding property owners. In this particular case, you would need a supermajority, which would be five positive votes to override the, uh, the petition of the uh, surrounding property owners. One more time. Clarify that it was Plus. approved by PNZ. The the planning zoning approved uh, this um, this recommendation to you. The app, there is a specific use. It was amended uh, to reduce the in number of units on the site. <clears throat> uh, the uh, but the uh, there is a petition by the more than 20 percent of the surrounding property owners opposed to this uh, proposed change. Define more than 20 percent for me. Yeah. Okay. How well, there. The we notify the people uh, within a 200-foot radius. 20% of the people that live inside that circle of 20, 200 feet um, have the opportunity to to oppose it or or, or render their their uh, positive vote for it. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, there was negative votes of more than uh, than 20% of the people residing in that circle. Mr. Medina, I have a question. Um, could you discuss a little bit about the potential historic overlay in that okay. area? Um, you can put the map, please, Robert. Um, this is the Riverside, uh, what we call the Riverside neighborhood of of, uh, of Browns of the West Side, and basically here. Yeah, that's Lakeside, Lake 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 correct? Lake Lake We're talking Side. about Lakeside. Lakeside. And, and basically here, uh, but at one time under a planning maps, it's called Riverside. It's actually Riverside. Uh, but but here on on this side of the street, you have large lots, and you have very large homes on those lots. Uh, so uh, some of the homes still have uh, uh, their older homes, but they have uh, distinguishing uh, architectural uh, significance to, to to some of them. So uh, Joe Gavito and his uh, and Mr. Goodman are studying the area to expand the, the overlay district onto this neighborhood. There, there is a neighborhood association uh, supporting that and pushing for that development uh, of, this, of this neighborhood here. And, and it is you know, a very old neighborhood. It's, uh, and there are some houses there that have some kind of uh, architectural aspects to them that, that could be uh, historically significant and they should be saved. There's some beautiful large colonial style right. homes there. But then um, I want to add, and I don't know if there's anybody here to, to protest against it, um, in the alley, towards the alley, because I was out in that area um, viewing with, uh, with, with Ms. Paredes, uh, there's, a structure, there's a structure which is a small apartment complex yes, that looks yeah. very, that looks um, Right in that area, that looks very shady. There hasn't been much work done there, and I remember um, that a, that a complex very vague, very clearly due to the fact that uh, I would drop off flyers there when we would do uh, toy drives for uh, uh, the people around uh, St. Joseph Catholic Church, and 
and I was just there the other week, and it still looks the same. We haven't done much to it. Um, and I believe here we're going to have a complex that's going to enhance the area, um, not, not do anything that will devalue it. Um, so that's that you know that's my um, mm. that's my opinion. I haven't received any any negative uh, on specifically on this re regarding you know any of the other residents. Nobody's contacted me personally, but that's that's my view. I think it's going to enhance the area. Um, if there's discussion on we have a school nearby, there's a, the school. The Russell Elementary is about what a block away from <coughs> it's about yet here. in front of all that property, which is about I want to say about two four four blocks or so, is a larger apartment complex. So. Traffic is, is going to be there. Well, I'm concerned, um, I must say, about the, his, the, you know, destroying the historic integrity of that particular I, neighborhood. And that's, like and that's not what I want to do. I, you know, that's, that's nowhere in my discussion, and, and Commissioner, we've discussed it, um, depending on what the public has to say, because I also want to hear that input. Um, I'd like us to consider the option of Amendment. putting a condition to the resolution that would ask them to include the guideline of overlay 11. So in essence, when we talk about the historical, the historic, the historicalness of the, of, the, of, the, of the facility, of the complex, it must go through the guidelines. It must go to Heritage Council. Right. That's the, ben, and you, and I, yeah. you and I had this conversation. Brownsville is known for its, for historic Brownsville, OK? Let's be very careful. We, at the same time, while we, while we want to conserve our history, we cannot hold back progress. Okay? Now, come on, Ben. You know, we got to work with these people. We've worked with people before. We've asked them that within their plans, if they're willing to help us out. Now, it's not, in all fairness to the person that's applying for this, it is still not historic. It has not been. Now, I can tell you that I want that somebody's going to go build a complex in Southmost. And if it's not historic yet, and you go tell me, oh, well, we're going to make it historic. Well, you know what, Ben? Right now, it's not. It's not historic right now. I want to conserve just as much as the next person, but I'm not going to hold back progress either. My parents' home has been there for years. That doesn't make it historic. Well, but these are historic homes. They are older homes. They're colonial. If you've driven there on that Risaka, they are beautifully preserved homes there. I can't tell you the owners of them, but just driving down in that area, they are beautiful homes. If the owners will meet with some of, you know, with the Heritage Committee again, or, some guidelines. That, you know. And, you know, and I, and again, I know Ms. Fadis is here, and again, I, I also would ask you to come, I, I think she should come and I. discuss it, but sure. if yeah. the opportunity yeah. presented itself to establish, and even though they're, they're not even in the 011, would she be, would she opt well, to say, uh, Commissioner, it, this was possibly approved to recommend approval by the Plan Zoning Commission. Um, you could, uh, and it is a specific use, there are conditions, you could impose that condition that they comply with all the rules and regulations of the 011 overlay district. So that's a condition not that you have the right to. Not if it's, I mean, I don't know if that's right. It's yeah. not, it's not consider o, what is it, 011? No, no, you can impose conditions on, this is a specific use. So, so there are, you have the authority to. I think that's being a, a that's specific right use, property the conditions are already there, Ben. I don't think, yeah. No, no, I, I understand, but I'm just addressing the commissioner's uh, comment. Don't don't who's add here, things that aren't. Who's here to protest? Anybody here in opposition? Them? Yes, sir. They're right behind me. All right. Well, let's hear from you. Well, commissioners, uh, honorable mayor, members of the commission, <clears throat> I do agree with uh, some parts of, of what you'd said. Uh, I'm from that area. I, I attended Russell. I went to Stell. Went to Pace. I lived on Honeydale, off of Honey Drive, in that area, <clears throat> and there are some homes on that on that that I would consider myself. <coughs> but there are also many businesses. There's a trader park. There's apartments right across the street with about a hundred yeah, units. Yeah. There's apartments right behind me that I can throw a rock and and hit at. So I I kind of disagree with the fact that I don't know what you are you going to consider the the trailer park historic or 
the apartments behind the historic because they've been there 40 years or more. <coughs> Since I was a kid coming back and I would walk that way to school and, and walk back. Uh, this is uh, the corner of Lakeside and Central, there is, uh, yeah, right which there. was formerly known as Pace Grocery Store. I know my parents used to go there. And I'm shop sorry, there. would you, uh, sorry to interrupt, would you tell us quickly your name? Adrian Paredes. And Paredes. you're the applicants. Thank you. Yes, we're the owners. Okay. We're the owners of the apartment. And uh, there's a service center with an 18 wheeler uh, a service center there on the corner of Lakeside across the street from what's now known the Autry Pharmacy. Uh, there's also a, uh, which is right there, which that used to be known as Pace Grocery Store. Now, a little further down the street, which is right next to the service center, there was a car wash where I remember going there and getting my car washed many times before. Many times. Now, you many can vacuum it out and drive through there. And I think they used to have a convenience store and a video right. place there Both too. Right. Yeah. This is the trailer park that I'm talking about right here. This is right, a, this is a little further down yeah, getting close to Russell. Now you can't make it out, but it says speed limit 20 because that's a school crossing zone. There's about three entrances into that trailer park on the Rasak. Okay. This is a doctor's office on the same side that we live on. Dr. Gonzalez, she has a pediatric office right across from the trailer park. Okay. Now on both sides of her, there are houses on both sides of her. Uh, that's, I guess, our historic house that uh, you've, uh, I guess you might have missed it on the drive by. But uh, as you can tell, it is, I mean, we, that's something we would have to demolish and, and rebuild, you know. And like I said, I, I think it would be an improvement for the, for the area. Right across the street, that's my front yard, right there, the picture on the top. That's what I look at, Lakeside Apartments. Okay. They've been there for a few years, too. They've been there for yeah. as long as I can remember. I, don't I think know it's said enough. I'd like to make a motion to close second. public hearing. Second. All right. We have a motion to close public hearing by Commissioner Zanetto, seconded by Commissioner Camarillo. The park behind my house right there. <laughs> second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Move to approve. All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, motion approve to approve by Commissioner Zanetto, seconded by the applicants. Commissioner Camarillo. Yes. No. All in, in favor? favor of the applicant, Ben. In favor of the, favor of the applicant. In favor of all, the applicant. All, all, uh, all uh, in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Next item. Item number 19, public hearing and action on first reading of protested ordinance number 235-2005-078-S to allow an apartment specific use in a dwelling use district for 1.1 acres out of lots 3 and 4 of block number 10 of Riverside Park Edition located at 404 Riverside Boulevard. Uh, I don't want members of the, that uh, one, I don't want mayor no. members of the plans uh, members of the city commission. This is the area shaded in red. Uh, this is Riverside uh, Boulevard here. Uh, this is a protested uh, this is a protested case to you. And in this case, the plans zoning commission denied uh, this application. The applicant would like it's a specific use. The applicant would like to construct ten units on this site. The uh, planning department, what was its recommendation? Was to deny. Was to deny on what basis? Um, there was some neighborhood opposition and also the, uh, they were concerned about the density on this particular. The what? Density. And uh, basically, if you put up the map. Um, the church? Well, it's, that's a home. There's a home. Basically, as you can see from the our zoning, God's from our day. map, they are. Uh, ben. There are no apartments in the area. There, there are in the immediate area in this pocket of the neighborhood here. There are really no apartments uh, of this of this density in in the neighborhood. There are some, but they, they, we counted about five units in an older structure. How many units is this um, for? Ten. Cool. Ten yeah. units. Twelve units. What is the property Un zoned so. now? It's dwelling A. Dwelling ben, a I'm asking you a simple question. Hold, what on, is hold, hold on, one at a time, one at a time. <laughs> we haven't gotten to the argument phase yet. What is dwelling A? It's single family, one home per, per parcel. Okay, Commissioner Longoria. Then this is a very big lot. Church of God, Seventh Day, owner. Is there an actual existing church property there or is it just a property? Well, uh, and your question is, is, is there Who a... Who owns it? Is it the yeah. church that is owns the church it and there, they're putting up apartments? Or is it just a property? Or is there an existing church there? What is there, Ben? I have 
Church of God, Seventh Day, as oh, the owner. What are you referring yeah, to? Yeah, that's what we have as the owner. The property. The owner ben. of the property. Oh, ben. The application. It says, yes. Uh, their representative is Ar is is Jarko. Right. And, and but that's this is a management church. company. That's a management company uh, applying for for the rezoning. The owner, uh, in this case, there's no church. It's a vacant piece of property. But it's owned by the church. It's owned church. by the church, yes. And the church wants to build apartments there? No. The previous owner, whatever, whoever. The, no, the, 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 the potential, potential buyer. new owner or buyer. Jarco. I mean, Arco. <clears throat> I imagine, Commissioner, that the uh, potential buyer is, is waiting to, to find out if it can be rezoned prior exactly. to yeah, right. the sale. It's contingent. Ben, I wanted to touch base. Purchase. Originally, how many apartments did he want to place in there? Always 10. It's just been 10. So has it gone below 10 now? No. I understood there were 14 from my notes. When Originally. I'll tell you what, Ben, I'm we sorry, have some. 12 uh, units, and it's been reduced to um, 10. To 10. Be before, before, and I'm going to let everybody get a chance to speak. I just want to make sure that everybody's aware of the facts. Is it, what is it, Mr. Arriaga? It, 12. It's 12. It's 12. So we're not, so it hasn't dropped to 10. It has been reduced, yeah. And the density is not an issue, I understood, because it's a large parcel. Is that correct? An acre, more than an acre? I mean, there's got to be growth now. These people don't know. All right. I guess I'd like to hear what, what yeah. would be the issue, and if we can let's, have let's, the residents. Let's, let's, let's let them. Go ahead. Sir. Ms. Rockovic? You can tell everybody your name, please. Okay. My name is Howard Hotkevig. I live at 415 Riverside, which is Caddy Corner across from where those apartments are <coughs> being proposed to be built. The Planning and Zoning Committee has already turned this down, and rightfully so. Uh, these folks, when they bought the property, they knew they were buying property that was single dwelling. This neighborhood has been a very quiet neighborhood and a very good neighborhood to bring up the children and every uh, because of the neighborhood being a quiet neighborhood an older neighborhood and uh, we would like to keep it that way by putting these apartments that would in number one increase the traffic cause some danger to the small children that walk up and down those streets not to say that uh, there would be a mixture of the caliber of the occupants. I myself one time lived in an apartment myself. I have nothing against people that live in apartments. I uh, couldn't, and I, I kind of consider myself a pretty good guy, but my, uh, some of my neighbors I would not. And so this is another concern that we have. Uh, you know, we don't have a crime rate in that area right now, and we just like to keep that neighborhood quiet the way it is, and again, uh, when the folks bought that I mean, property, they knew what they were buying, and to uh, increase the population and the kind of population that might uh, rent those units is a very uh, strong concern of ours. And I have some other folks here that would like to express their uh, opinions also. Please feel free to step forward. And just uh, be sure you tell, uh, read your name into the microphone so we can hear you. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners and Honorable uh, guests here. About nine years ago, my husband and I purchased a home in the Riverside area. Having lived there all my life, I knew it was a smart choice. The R Riverside area is a very quiet neighborhood. It is a single family dwelling neighborhood, knowing that that's why we purchased there. Having at the time an eight-year-old daughter and my parents living in the area for well over 40 years, I knew that they'd be able to walk safely to visit you know, their grandparents, the old family style, barrio style that Brownsville's known for. And, um, and I'm sorry, I don't think I said my name was Sandra Huerta. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, nine years later, we have two more daughters five and six years old, now my 17 year old, my eight year old is now 17. And um, I revel at the idea that they're able to go outside and play, just like the things that I was able to do way back then, when I was young. 
having these apartments here, that will all disappear. I won't be able to trust that they can safely walk around the corner to, my, to their grandparents' house, to my parents' house. I won't be able to trust that they can go outside in the front yard and play safely. Traffic's going to increase, the quietness is going to, to decrease, and it's just not gonna be the same Riverside area. Once you cross those railroad tracks, there are no apartments. It's all single family dwelling. We ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to preserve family life in Brownsville. With the north side and other parts of family uh, of Brownsville growing, you know, it's a good thing. But we also need to preserve the single family dwelling areas so that newcomers to Brownsville have a variety of choices. Thank you for taking listening to us and taking the time to address this matter. Thank you, Ms. Huerta. Anyone else? This is the time. Let, let's, let me, let's let all of them speak, Ms. Arriaga, and then. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Um, I don't want to take too much of your time, but my name is Linda Perez, and I live at 405 Riverside, and that is next to Mr. Hotkevig. And I've lived there for the past 25 years. And as far as I've lived there, um, there's only been single family homes. And basically, I like to keep it that way. Um, Riverside area is a s small community, quiet community. And I think that if we put in these apartments, I think it's just gonna increase the traffic and our kids aren't gonna be safe out in the streets. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, my name is Juana de la Rosa, and I live at 564 Los Altos. We're right across from that lot. And like Los Altos? Was, yes, we're right across from the lot. And uh, I've lived there for about 15 years. You know, we've got children also. It's a very quiet neighborhood, and I guess the, the main concern of the, of the residents around the area is uh, the safety of the children. We don't know what type of people are going to live in that, in that apartment complex. It's um, safety as far as the driving, you know, around that area. Uh, our kids are able to go out and, and play freely around there. And with us, with the apartment complex being there, it's going to be a hazard, you know, for the, for the kids. It's going to be, it's going to be a, really a safety issue, more for the kids than for anyone else. And of course, you know, the concern of uh, just, we don't know what type of people are going to go in there. So that's really the main concern, you know, that it's, and it's also, like they said, it's a single family dwelling unit or area there. So we don't see why there has to be an apartment complex which would make it commercial you know in that case it wouldn't be um i don't think it would be a residential area anymore by putting that apartment complex in there you know we've had our some of our, our concerns as far as um since the border is close by there too you know that's a concern as well so putting those apartments is going to be another concern for the residents within uh, that area. I, I have to, and, and I, I, I think all of you raise valid concerns, but, but I am concerned by this statement of who's going to move in there. The, I'm the, very concerned uh, by that because I will, I will tell you this, and Mr. Hockevig alluded to it, you know, at one exactly. point we've all lived in, in an apartment. Exactly. If, if the concern the, is a traffic issue, I can appreciate that. If the concern is you have a multifamily and, and a single, I can appreciate that. But if what I'm hearing, Maybe I'm wrong, but what I'm hearing is you're not sure who's going to live there and that whether or not your children are going to be safe. Um, that's, that doesn't... Well, it's not really the, the people or, you know, what they do or what they don't do. It's just that, that that area is supposed to be a residential area. And placing an apartment complex there, it wouldn't make it an, a residential area. We've had, some of us have had uh, some concern as far as, like, fencing our, our homes and stuff through the front part, and we can't, why? Because it's a residential area. So then if it's a residential area- Can't fence the front of your house because it's a residential area? That's what they told us some time back. Who told you There's that? homes that are, that are fenced on Riverside. And I know because my grandmother lives on 54 Riverside. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that fence has been up for, for a long time and so mm -hmm. has the neighbor to the left. As long as you respect the, so e I'm sorry, Commissioner. I'm sorry. As long as you respect the easement, there should be no problem with no. you putting up a fence. Right. Hey, um, can you, I see, Two photographs, uh, like oh, um, aerials. Do you have those on the? Okay, I want to. I want to try to understand better exactly where this is. 
Mr. Arriag, if you want to, you can step forward and try to direct us on where the where this um, proposal is going. The proposed side is on the corner of Los Altos and Riverside. Exactly. Which is ben, do you have your pointer, Ben? Pointer? Uh, where's the pointer? The pointer. The wrong section. No Don't use. There are two aerials. Is it like on the curve? Next to that house, it's right on the it's left hand side. A house? It's adjacent mm -hmm. to it, and that is actually yeah. not a house. There's eight apartment dwellings in it. I was going to say that looks like an apartment place. Yeah, it, it is, and it's completely adjacent to the right of the proposed site. Is that an site. apartment? Now it is That's an. That's the Barrow Manor. It is an older home, but there's it's been converted into eight apartment dwellings, and there are eight. Um, eight uh, tenants living in there now. Because I've actually How long has it been like that? It's been there it's quite a few years. Ben? So those are the ones I asked that you covered about five mailboxes. There's, there's eight. Well, okay, my, my question is if it's, if, did they, did they get a specific use? No, that was not probably. Oh, it was already, an, it was already apartment. Oh my gosh, when was that? Give or take, Ben, how many years? I don't. So at least 10 years. Yeah, more than that. That was not you part of that? this. Well, that was going to be my next question. If they were apartments or, you know, what type of unit it, there, there was, because I've always seen it. To me, it always looks vacant. And, you know, okay, so. Right. One car that drives up and parks there. There's not, and you saw it vacant right now. That, I mean, I don't know when that picture was taken, but if there's so people living, you would see. And I, I have to add something that I forgot to add and give you my name right now. We also have to remember that the children at Skinner Elementary. I'm a teacher. Yeah, I to start elementary. The, Skinner at Chil uh, the children at Skinner Elementary, excuse me, walk home, mo the, the majority of them. Yes, there are sidewalks, but if we have to deal with more traffic, those children are in danger. And they walk home because of policy <coughs> and so forth that they're not going to be bused because there's sidewalks within certain um, aerial fields. I don't know the exact limits and the limitations, but you know those children. I, I can venture out and easily say about 90% of those children walk home. And the Riverside area is zoned for skin. Well, ma'am, for years, and I'm sorry, but for years, children walked by a railroad. That was right next to an active railroad. So, Sandra, single dwelling family area, single family dwelling area, and we need to preserve some of that. Also, along with our expansions, we need to have a variety for brown. Let me ask: When was the last time a home was built, a new home was built on Riverside? On Riverside. I don't even think there's a lot available in Riverside besides these lots. It's been a long, long time. It's been a long time. All not since not since I've lived there, and I've lived there for 40 years. And when 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 I when we moved in this house that I live in, it's right across the street from that uh, apartment dwelling that you're all are looking okay, at. Okay, is it is it the lot in between the two? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, it's that That's it's that right lot. Here. Oh, okay. All right. That was a single uh, family. Uh, unit whenever we moved there. The boroughs lived there. And uh, they uh, the, the, the The mansion that Sandra just alluded to. It's called the Barrow Manor. Manor, I'm Barrow sorry. And uh, when they passed away, uh, it suddenly became uh, apartments, so unbeknownst to us, uh, there was no hearing or anything about that. It's not even zoned for that uh, at all. At this time, it is not zoned for apartments either. And uh, it, like I say, just became that way. And uh, this is one of the concerns that I have because uh, right now the place is vacant. It's nice and quiet around there like it used to be. Uh, when those uh, apartments were being uh, rented, uh, if you want to listen to music at 2 o'clock in the morning on a weekend, you don't have to go outside my bedroom. And we have a very well insulated house. Uh, you can see the field of vibrations of the of the base 
uh, things that went on there. So, the, you know, the, the neighborhood was not a very quiet neighborhood at that time. Now, that, again, has, that's in the past. There's nobody living there in those apartments now. And uh, really, that's the way it really should be. But at one time, that was not a very quiet neighborhood uh, when, that, uh, when those apartments were filled. But Mr. Ackman, I also want to point out that uh, there's the Ayala, Ayala Park just back that way, not even a block or so. And I've been told kids playing basketball, and it's an open park, been told to play basketball 2, 3 in the morning. And that's fine, but we're saying no new, roughly. Get, okay. Well, from, from. But we're from, saying no, no from, new. From, from this location or from your house? From that location. <coughs> Yet we're saying no new noise to be added in there. What happens if, and again, because I don't see people really moving into that area because I know they're not. More people are leaving that area. But we have two parks, one on Riverside and then one, the, the, the Riverside Park and Ayala. A lot of people walking all times of day. Just across the railroad tracks, we have that small mart, and then across we have that uh, small uh, raspa stand. Um, people going, you know, to do what they need to do. Um, I guess, you know, my, what I'm trying to understand, and, and I understand what you all are saying. I mean, I'm, I mean, I was raised in that area. I mean, my, 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 my grandparents uh, residing in 54 Riverside is what if, they were to, what if they were to build five, six homes? Are we going to say, well, we don't want anybody to build a home on there because it's going to add to the traffic? I know we're going to be redoing, you know, redoing Riverside Road, uh, Boulevard. Yes, ma'am. Very different from 12 families. That, that seven extra families you're talking about would be complex. On an acre and a half. So then if we were to cut that in half, would people still be resentful to saying, well, what if the families that move in have a lot of kids? No. I hear you. That's about five blocks away, which is almost a half a mile away, Mr. Comedio. Mr. Mayor, I get the impression that there is a lot of fear of the unknown, perhaps because they don't know what the builder's conceptual ideas are. Maybe he. Let, let, let me let Ms. Radiaga speak. The commission. My name is Jaime Arriaga, and I represent Arco Management Group. Um, I'd like to point out a few things, uh, if I may. First of all, um, we were denied our initial application by uh, PNZ um, without really real uh, justification. So I'm trying to clarify um, a few a few points there. Um, first of all, um, the vicinity does contain other properties that are. Um, uh, multi-dwelling and one being the one directly adjacent. I have been there and it is set up for eight dwellings and there are people living there because I've, I've seen cars there. I've uh, actually walked in to the place trying to understand uh, what, the, uh, what, you know, what the situation there was. So that is completely adjacent. That's the picture that you just saw there. Um, regarding additional traffic, Again, the lot is very big. It is very large. We are only uh, proposing 12 units. The current zoning right now is for a dwelling or a duplex. Okay. Now, based on the area, uh, the proposed so du size, duplexes could go in there right now, without having a for, for, without a rezoning. Right. Well, could it could it be subdivided without any objection? And, and he could put duplexes there. So it, how, many, how many duplexes per lot? Two. Two, so you could put? Seven lots. Fourteen. So there, there's your 14 duplexes. OK, go ahead. Mr. So Ray. again, based, you know, based, on, based on the proposed project, Duplex. if um, you know, it's not approved, then the alternative would be to subdivide, and Duplex. we would still get the 12 Duplex. or 14 families Duplex. in there. Duplex. Now, the things to keep in mind there is that because we're applying for specific use, uh, zone, there are certain restrictions such as green areas, uh, the maintenance of the uh, existing trees there, which we've actually um, uh, designed the project around to, to keep those existing trees there. Uh, if we go the next route and subdivide, then we would have to destroy those trees. Um, we would have limited restrictions Worse. regarding the, um, you know, the, the, the integrity of, of the buildings, and you would still get those 12 uh, families in there. Um, now, there's a couple concerns. There's a couple things that do concern me regarding, uh, you know, some of the, uh, uh, the things that have been expressed by the neighbors, and one of which is the integrity of the occupants. Now, 
that is something that we couldn't possibly gauge. Um, these you know, folks are moving in or uh, people that live there now, uh, for them to say or anyone to say that uh, they're going to cause a disturbance in the middle of the night um, is just uh, unreasonable. So I, I really don't think that's, that's a justifiable enough uh, uh, you know, point to make um, to, uh, to deny the, the application there. The other is the traffic. Now, as we discussed, if we do go the other route, and uh, which we will if, if it's not approved, uh, the traffic will, you know, is, is consistent with the density that, that the land yields. So if we do um, put the duplexes in there, we still get the 12 families. There is not much traffic. Uh, I understand that. However, there are people moving out, and there are certain, there's quite a few homes there um, that are right now are, are vacant. So that may offset the increased traffic that, that they talk about. Now, we're not talking about a 20-unit project. We're only talking about 12 dwellings, which is not going to generate the amount of traffic that they're... they're, uh, they're does the, uh, Ben, does this, uh, the proposed uh, project fit within the uh, acreage site, the 1.1 and all that? Yes, they, they laid out their site plan. Okay. So the site plan fits. Yes. yes. Okay. Which was the site plan there earlier. Now the the actual, uh, you know, there is quite a few, quite a bit of land. So there's actually, could, we could have possibly put in more units there. However, we didn't in order to keep the same density that as a uh, as a duplex. Exactly. Okay. What uh, what type of renters are you going to try and attract? Are you what price range is low income, no, moderate? No, no, it's uh, middle, uh, mid high income. So we're trying to attract uh, young professionals to go back into the area. Uh, we're trying to, uh, again, going with the revitalize, revitalization of, of the area there, we're trying to attract people um, to kind of move back there. Um, they're going to be three bedroom, two bath type of, uh, you know, apartments. So it's not going to be uh, more family uh, oriented or section eight type of uh, type of uh, not subsidized. scenario. Um, but here we go again with who's going to live there. Well, I mean, I, well, I, I, just I don't to have an idea. The, the Is there anything else you want to ask? Yeah. I mean, mention Mr. Arriaga. Uh, all right. Sorry, uh, man. Uh, Let me ask this quick question. Mr. Hockebeck, had did you know that they could put duplexes in there without... Did you all know that? Did you all know that? I didn't know that. No. Okay. Well, knowing that... Prefer. But I do have to make a correction. Yes, there are people moving out, but there are also people moving in. At, There's houses being renovated and fixed up. And that's, 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 that's kind of what we do. want to see. But, but my question is, what would you prefer? Now, and, you know, would you prefer this planned uh, apartment or 12 duplexes? Neither nor. Well, he's gonna do the you, other one. You, you just heard. He qualifies he, already he, without He can do the other one without anything. I would prefer the duplexes. Really? Really? That would be wow. worse. I, 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 see, I would think that would, wow. that would, that would be, be worse. A, it, be it worse. would be much worse. It looks yeah. worse. Well, first of all, I don't. their part because it's more expensive to build. No, no, no. I think it's on a square foot basis. So. These apartments. Seven duplexes. That's what they're allowed. That's how much. That's what they're allowed. They're allowed up to fourteen. Seven making two. Seven, seven. That's seven driveways. But there are no streets in that area. It, it is one. They'll subdivide. Right. They'll subdivide. Yeah, but if it subdivides out, we we can fit yeah. you know six seven lots in there. That's seven driveways. Under the current zoning, it still yields Go for it, the twelve to fourteen units. Edward, However, again, back. We're back and I don't want to beat it close horse. it. We're not bound by the restrictions of a specific use zoning. Oh, that's, that. that's true. In other words, by this application, they have to build it the way they have cited it, the way they're planning it, uh, with a duplex. They don't have to do any of those things with regards to How green space, use. all these other things. I, I think, and it's hard, to, it's hard to see it because we don't know, but it, it sounds to me the apartment complex is going to be a, uh, while it, I don't think you'll ever be happy because it's not a single family, it, it'll fit better than seven duplexes on that area. Without you'll have general use. space. And I, and but you change I have, the I, I have a very... Uh, serious question why why when people buy property and a home and they're told it's a single dwelling and that's the way it's been districted and you live there and invest all your money and live there you have a right why all of a sudden should it get changed 
I mean, you know, when people it's buy not something, being I, I'm going to buy. I'm going to buy a brand new Ford here. Okay. And it's an eight-cylinder Ford. Mr. Hockavig, that's that's what I, I guess. For the point I'm making is that if if we uh, deny the application. He can go forward, and it's not being changed. It's been zoned as dupl uh, single or, or, uh, dwelling. or dwelling. Single family dwelling. Right. But duplex fits within the single family dwelling. No, it's, what, what, I, what we're saying is that it doesn't matter. 1954. And for nine years, we have been putting money into that home to, to preserve the wood floors, to preserve the naughty pine walls, to preserve the mahogany so gonna, walls. Okay. And then you're gonna I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. With the income that we bring in. But I chose that area because it was a quiet, single family dwelling, and now you're gonna change that. We're not changing anything. What you're doing is you're pulling the rug from under my leg. No. Because my house no. is a single family dwelling, no apartments there. Ms. Huerta. He wants about the Barrow Manor. But I've lived there all my life. Ms. Huerta. We lived at 54 Riverside. We lived at 54 Riverside before we purchased 415 Riverside. And it's just, it was an area that I went back to because of the type of area it was. Ms. Huerta. Tell me, my, my house is not going to be worth anything because it's going to be. Unfortunately, you're speculating in the most negative form and fashion with regard to this project. And I, you know but there's no basis for that. Ms. Huerta, I would just venture to say this. Okay, <laughs> you want us to side with you, fine. You're not going to have the apartment complex there. But tomorrow he will go to Ben Medina's office and he will subdivide and he will put in seven sets of duplexes in your area. And he is fully by the law entitled to do that. I think he would. Ma'am, if I have a piece of, can I, can I, I'll let you speak now, please. Let me speak. If I'm an investor and I'm going to invest and I'm being told, I bought this piece of property to make my investment. Now, if I'm being told, okay, fine, guy, there's neighborhood opposition. The city of Brownsville is telling you, you cannot build this complex. I'm going to make my project. So if I can make duplexes, I will make duplexes. My investment is going to come back. My investment is still going to come back no matter what I spend. So I'll spend a couple of more thousand and I'll put in the duplexes. That's fine. Once I tell them I'm building duplexes, the bank will approve my loan and, that's and I will build the duplexes, but I'll just, I'll just without restrictions that's and I'll just get it back in my rent. I'll jack up a couple of $50 mm -hmm. per unit per month and I'll make back my investment. But we also have to remember it is a proposed buyer. It has not been purchased yet because they don't want to purchase it <laughs> if apartments are not allowed. I mean, the deal is done. We're, we're closing on this thing. We're four and a half. It just it takes a while to, to get the paperwork through. So, like always, we do have a contingency plan. The contingency plan is there's no defense. May I motion to close public hearing? Second. I have a motion to close by Commissioner Camarillo, seconded by Commissioner Longoria. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Action. Move to approve. Motion Second. to approve by Commissioner Camarillo, seconded by Commissioner Longoria. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Nay. Motion carries. One, two, three, four, five. Item 20. Item 20, public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 235-2006-001 to rezone from dwelling A and G classification to general retail G classification 4.791 acres out of 19.795 acre tract out of blocks one and two of RA Leak Estates near Frontage Road and Danette Road. Hello, Mayor, um, this is a proposed uh, property uh, to be rezoned. The Plan Zoning Commission voted unanimously to approve this recommendation to you. This is a public hearing. Motion to close public hearing. Motion to close by Commissioner Herrera, seconded by Commissioner Nettles. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Action. Move to approve. Motion to approve Second. by Commissioner Herrera, seconded by Commissioner Nettles. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item 21. Item 21, public hearing and action on first reading on ordinance number 235-2006-002 to rezone from dwelling F classification to general retail G classification 
lots lot three blocks one and two of Iowa Acres subdivision near Iowa Avenue and Boca Chica Boulevard Honorable Mayor and City Commission this is the property right here this lot shaded in red this is Iowa and this is Boca Chica Boulevard the plans are in commission were unanimously to approve this recommendation to you this is a public hearing Move to close. Motion to close by Commissioner Lagodia. Second. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Camarillo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries action. Mayor, move to approve. Motion approved by Commissioner Lagodia. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Camarillo. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Next item. Item number 22, public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 235-2006-003-S to allow a medium commercial specific use in trailer in a general retail use district for lot 30 of block 7 of Rose Garden subdivision Section 3 near Old Highway 77 and McAllen Road. Honorable Mayor, uh, this is Old Highway 77. This is the expressway at, at Payne Motors is about approximately right here. Uh, this is the property shaded in red. The Plan Zoning Commission voted unanimously to approve this recommendation to you. This is a public hearing. Motion to close. Motion to close by Commissioner Roy, seconded by Commissioner Longoria. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Action. Move to approve. Second. Motion approved by Commissioner Arroyo, seconded by Commissioner Longoria. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Next item. Item 23, consideration and action to adopt budget amendment resolution number 2006-13 to amend the general fund, convention and tourism fund, community development fund, landfill tipping fee increase fund, capital equipment fund, 2001 CO fund, airport fund, motor vehicle parking system fund, Public Transit and the Brownsville Golf Center Fund to provide funding to cover the cost of granting to the non-civil service employees a 5% increase to those employees earning less than $8 per hour, 4% to those employees earning more than $8.04 per hour, and 3% to those employees earning more than $8.20 per hour, and to revise or adjust the city's non-civil service employees pay matrix whereby the beginning hourly rate of the lowest pay, paid employee will be $8.03. Mm. Uh, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Commission, this is a budget amendment to, uh, to adjust the pay matrix whereby every city employee that works for the city will, will get at least $8 an hour entry level. Um, currently there are 45 employees that are making $7.65. If we increase it to 5%, then their beginning entry level hourly rate will be 8.033. For those that are making 7.73, we are recommended also a 5%. That we only have one employee, that means his hourly rate will go from 7.73 to 8.11.16. We have 16 employees that are that are making 784 by going 85%, they'll be making 8.23. We have eight employees that are making 788 an hour. 5% increase will give them an 8.274% hourly rate. Uh, and the uh, there's eight for 786 will bring their hourly rate to 835.8. Then for those employees that are making Eight dollars and four cents. We are recommending a four percent. There are sixty-seven employees. That then that that hourly rate will be a little above the current employee that's making seven eighty-six. It'll be eight dollars and thirty-six two. And then there's eight employees that are there. We are recommending obviously anything above eight twenty for three percent. Uh, next slide, please. The total. Um, increase associated with bringing the employees to the $8 per hour range will cost 51901 and it's broken down, in the last column is broken down by funds. Uh, the, the number one fund uh, would be... Pete, I'm sorry to interrupt, Pete, Thank but you. I think this whole commission is waiting to make this motion, so... To approve. In okay. second. All in unison, we move to approve. Everybody can. We can tell you're on a roll, but... We're all in favor. We're all in favor of this, Pete. Thank you. We have a motion all to approve by this. Commissioner Zettos, Second. seconded by Commissioner Longoria. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. 
Mayor, Commission, th th this race goes to the position, so it's to the matrix, so anyone coming into the city, uh, future it's employees it will start off with that rate, not good. Long overdue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item 24. Item 24, consideration and action to adopt resolution number 2006-18, commemorating the 77th anniversary of the airport in Brownsville. And announcing the celebration of Air Fiesta 2006 and living history in Brownsville, Texas. Larry Brown. Mayor, members of the commission. Second. Sounds good to me. <laughs> good job, Larry. All right, let's you tell come everybody. to the air show. Let's hey, tell let's everybody, tell everybody the, date yeah. of the air show. I'm sorry, Larry. I just missed it. <laughs> Go ahead. The date of the air show. March 11th and 12th. March 11th and 12th. And That's this correct. year it'll be done. It'll be on the east side of the airport. Normally it is on the west side of the airport. But uh, you recall, if you drive down Boca Chica, turn right on Vermilion, across uh, from the school, the air show will be conducted down by the air freight building and so forth on that side. And we'll have parking and everything? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, Larry. Motion to approve by Commissioner Longoria. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm sorry. Seconded by somebody. Second. Commissioner Nettles. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All Aye. opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Item 27. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Larry. Item 27, consideration and action regarding authorization and approval for full and final payment for any and all outstanding costs, expenses, charges, and or claims for the Dean Porter Park renovation project to Terry Ray Construction Company. Good job, Jim. Um, Mayor, members of the City Commission, this is to uh, satisfy any and all outstanding claims uh, regarding the construction of the Phase Two portion of the Dean Porter Park project. The, um, the documentation that I have uh, is incomplete. I believe that the uh, total amount outstanding of the claim is approximately $554,000. Uh, what we're going to ask the Commission for approval tonight is to pay up to that amount to satisfy the final claims, but not more than that amount. I believe that a portion of, of what I'm looking at has been paid prior to tonight. All right. Move to approve. Motion approved by Commissioner Royals. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Camarillo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. <coughs> Item 29. Item 29, consideration and action to execute an interlocal agreement between the Cameron County District Attorney's Office and the Brownsville Police Department regarding a joint cooperation, corporation, cooperation investigation and assistance with the Cameron County investigations in the area of Cameron County adjacent to the City of Brownsville. Honorable Mayor and uh, City Commissioners, this is an agreement between the uh, District Attorney's Office and the uh, Police Department to uh, work jointly on investigations that are outside our jurisdiction. Move to approve. Second. Second. Uh, a motion approved by Commissioner Nettles, seconded by Commissioner Camarillo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Good job, Commander. Way to go, Commander. Thank you. Good job. Item 30. Item Quicker 30. than the Chief. Item 30, consideration and action to award a contract to the, for the construction of a chain link fence at the North Brownsville Little Miss Kickball Field Complex located at FM 511 property. Are we on both, Red? Mayor? Well, it's different. Um, different vendors. Oh, different. I'm sorry. Different vendors. I don't Mayor Commissioners, this was a, uh, a simple invitation for bids. There's nothing remarkable <laughs> to report to you. We did receive three bids. We're recommending approval to the low bidder. Central Fence and Supply Company, the amount is $24,018. This is for the kickball fields currently under construction. Little Miss Kickball Fields on 511. Jim, is any issue with moving forward on these on this item or the other one? Uh, no, sir. Okay. I don't believe so. All right. Move to approve. Motion Second. approved by Commissioner Roy, seconded by Commissioner Nettles. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Paul. Next item. What? No, no, I Item 31, consideration and action to award a contract for irrigation system improvements at the North Brownsville Little Miss Kickball Field Phenomenal. Complex, located at FM 511 property. Again, Honorable Mayor and Commissioners, uh, this was a sealed bid. We received bids on February 1st. We received a total of four bids for this project. We are recommending to you the low responsible bidder, which is Valley Garden Center DBA Southern Landscapes. Uh, they have recently opened an office in Brownsville. The bid amount is seventeen thousand seven hundred and eighty dollars. Motion to approve. Motion to approve Second. by Commissioner Camarillo, seconded by Commissioner Longoria. All in favor? Long overdue. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other public comment? Because I believe everybody that signed up spoke during the earlier items. Please? No. No. Move to adjourn. Okay. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you and enjoy Charles Days. Right. And don't forget to vote.
Oh yeah. Stand up and don't count on it. 